through the 1970s and 1980s, Patrice Russian burnt up the dance floor with a unique sound and a unique style. Whether it was jazz, pop, dance, or R&B, she had the groove that moved your feet. And behind those amazing songs was an amazing female artist who was determined to reach the highest high in her musical journey. And through that journey, Patrice Russian climbed out every pit hole that got in her path. This is the story of Patrice Russian. Patrice Russian grew up in Watts, Los Angeles. She was the oldest of two siblings. Her father was a computer analyst. Her mother, a prison administrator. Her parents made sure she got her education. She ended up taking piano lessons at USC, but started practicing at the age of five. I went through sort of a love-hate relationship with the piano. I think when I got to be about nine or 10, maybe 11 was when I realized that all my other friends didn't have to practice. They, they could just go right outside and play. At Locke High School in South Central Los Angeles, Patrice played flute in the school marching band and piano with the jazz band. And this is where music fell into her heart as a musical prodigy. And along with her studies there, it was that one day Patrice was at a local park where she met Don Cornelius with a group of her other friends. Don Cornelius came over to this park and he gathered all these kids in this park center. And he says, hey, you know, I'm bringing this show that I've done in Chicago to Los Angeles, it's called Soul Train. And at that time, that was when Don Cornelius was starting to do the soul train. And he asked a few of the kids there if they would be interested in being a part of the show. As Don Cornelius was moving his show from Chicago to Los Angeles, Patrice accepted the invitation to be a part of the show as a dancer. Let's meet two members of our soul train gang. I'd like your names and your birth sign. I'm Patrice Russian and I'm a Libra. Right on, I'm Ronald White and I'm Sagittarius. Okay, Patrice, I want you and Ronald to tell us a little about your signs or the way people under those signs are supposed to be. How about Libra? Well, Libras are very friendly people. They love everybody. Libra is the love sign. They're usually some way talented and extremely just and righteous people. And right at the high school, Patrice Russian enrolled at the University of Southern California for a music education major. And then at some point in time at the age of 19, she was offered a record deal by a jazz label, Prestige. And in 1974, Patrice Russian came out with an album called Perlusion, which put her image as a jazz instrumental player in front of all the big wigs of the jazz scene. This album put Patrice in the eyes and ears of the legends, of all the legends in the jazz community. Patrice then dropped two more jazz albums with Prestige while holding her own in a man's world of this jazz community. I was just really lucky to be able to kind of have this identity and discovery through the doing. And uh, it carried over into recording situations for me. And those situations will soon take a dramatic turn in Patrice Russian's music journey. So Patrice continued to establish herself as a jazz artist after releasing three albums with the label Prestige. But because jazz has a tight community, everyone outside of the jazz community didn't really know who Patrice Russian was until she got a record deal with Elektra and everything would change at that point in time. So in 1978, Patrice Russian dropped her first album. It was called Patrice. It was like the introduction to the pop world of who this girl was. But while working with Elektra, although this first album didn't really pop off like it should have, it raised the stakes for the second album to do even better. She finally started to get the pop world's attention with a breakthrough single, which was co-written by Patrice, Charles Mims, Freddie Washington, and Cherie Brown. And that song was called, Haven't You Heard, Giving It Up Is Giving Up. Haven't You Heard became Patrice Russian's breakout single, reaching number seven on the R&B charts. And it got her back on the soul train, but this time as a star. And as the word got around and the music hit everyone's ears, Patrice Russian's 
got the attention of a pop star named Prince. Prince reached out to Patrice and hired her to play on his debut album, For You. He already knew what he wanted. It was just a matter of orchestrating it. So I said, sure. So I did it. We had a chance to speak on the phone and we had a chance to meet. And, you know, we there was a kindred spirit, I think, in terms of all the possibilities musically. It was also rumored that Prince's next album, I Wanna Be Your Lover, was actually Prince expressing his feelings for Patrice. I didn't know that at the time. This could be an urban legend, too. But they say that he wrote, I want to be your lover to give to me. So I was happy that I got to know him to the level that I did. Patrice became a star, a hidden gem, who grew from a jazz culture to a pop culture. But not all her previous friends in the jazz community was too up in arms about her jump from jazz to pop. You, you can get higher. Patrice Russian went a little harder on her follow-up album. It was called Parsh, which recognized another dance single written by Charles Mims and Cherie Brown called Look Up. Look Up became a top 15 R&B hit and lit up the charts and rolled in at number two. By the 1980s, Patrice Russian found her niche by turning everything that she learned from doing jazz albums into R&B albums and creating dance hits that kept the club jumping and the party popping. Now that she had a signature style of singing, she changed her hairstyle to a signature look. As Patrice Russian's new album, Parse Kept the Party People Partying, another hit single dropped on the playlist. It was called Never Gonna Give You Up. Now that Patrice got everybody's attention, she went back into the studio to come up with another album, and this one was called Straight From The Heart. And this would be the album to define her legacy with the hit song that everybody still plays today called Forget Me Not. Patrice Russian's single Forget Me Not rolled in at number two on the dance charts. With the wonderful success of the single, Forget Me Not, Patrice's album, Straight From The Heart, is what marked her success and legacy and sold the most records during her whole entire career. Throughout her rise as a pop star, Patrice always kept her private life on the down low. But what most didn't know is that Patrice had her little thing going on with the co-writer, Charles Mintz. And by the time the fans started to suspect anything, that relationship was coming to an end. After the breakup between Patrice and Charles, Patrice moved on. She ended up meeting a guy, his name was Mark St. Louis. He was actually the best friend of her tour manager. And from that day, they never could be apart and end up getting married in the late 80s. And by the mid 80s in five albums with Electra Records, Patrice decided to change up her professional relationship as well. Her leap over to pop music was like a match made in heaven, but it didn't end that way. After five hit albums, by the mid 80s, Patrice Russian decided to leave her record label. Frustrated by the lack of direction from her record label, Electra Records, she ended up striking a deal with Arista, ran by Clive Davis, receiving more of the direction than ever before. At least that's what it seems like. It seems like she was on the move again. But the album that she released from Electra Records didn't do as good as she thought it was. It ended up landing at 77 on the dance charts. It was the lowest she ever gotten in nearly a decade. And just like that, Patrice Russian's musical career slowly faded away and ended. After more than a decade of being in the pop spotlight, Patrice Russian ended up taking a different path in her musical journey career. Patrice Russian ended up getting a great opportunity scoring music for Hollywood. Robert Townsend was looking for somebody to score his film, Hollywood Shuffle. So they paired me with another writer and I said, okay. And we did the music to Hollywood Shuffle. Robert Thompson would come in and, you know, he'd have the footage with no sound. So she had to create 
the music beds based upon what was happening with the scene and the sound. From that picture, Robert got five HBO comedy specials, and he asked me to music direct all five. And that started the ball rolling as far as that adventure. And the journey kept rolling. In 1989, Patrice Russian became the first female musical director for the NAACP Image Awards show. And she continued to hold that position for the next decade. And it didn't slow down there. In 1991, Patrice Russian became the music director for the Emmys Awards show. And also later on, she ended up scoring the Grammy Awards as well. Opportunities just kept dropping in her lap. She also scored the Brewster Place show as well. Through it all, Patrice still did make a full circle, doing shows with some of her old jazz mates like Ernie Watts, Alfonso Johnson, and Ndugu Chancellor. Together, they recorded two albums together. Patrice did once again go back into the pop scene, but this time, not as a star, but more like of a producer. She produced the album for Sheena Easton, and also was the music director for Janet Jackson on tour. Today, Patrice still devote her free time to music. She does music programs at different colleges from state to state. Patrice will always be a legend and always will be remembered for the joy that we had at parties and clubs and family cookouts with songs like Forget Me Not. If you enjoyed this Vinny documentary, make sure you subscribe and check out more videos just like this on our YouTube channel. My name is Antoine, and thank you for watching Urban TV On Demand.